So I've done quite a bit of printing. So let's look at some print quality. This was printed on my Troncy uh, 3D printer. You can see the lines pretty good. You can see there's some defects, artifacts. There's some blotches underneath the eyes. But I mean, it's not bad. I mean, it's just, it's just a planner that you hang on the wall. But to give you an idea, compare that to the P1P. This is the P1P uh, in a black filament. I think it's black. It's like a silk black. And you can see I don't have all the artifacts. Lines are nice and clear. This is the default settings on the P1P. Here's a large planner in purple. You can see. I mean, this thing prints pretty good straight out of the box. Here's a little planner that I did. And I did this with the P1P. So, as you can see, there was some black still in the nozzle that kind of spit out when it was doing the uh, first layer. But, quality-wise, I'm pretty impressed. Um, now I'm going to go over some of the things I found out on what I had to do after so much time of printing. I had some uh, adhesion problems. And I had some filament getting stuck to the nozzle. And I'll go over what I did to fix that. All right. So here's my P1P. Um, just to give you some idea on some reviews. I showed you the difference in the prints. And I really enjoy the quality. But... I did run into a few issues. One, the, the uh, P1P comes with a dual-sided textured PEI plate. If you'll notice on this one, you'll see some glue. <clears throat> I found out after about two weeks of printing, I started to lose adhesion. Um, the item I was printing would start uh, coming off. The, the first layer would start disconnecting. It wasn't adhering to the plate. I don't know if it was just something to do with the plate over time, losing its adhesion all by itself with nothing else. But what I did end up finding out uh, and practicing or testing was some ways to regain adhesion without having to replace the plate. Because I bought another plate after about two weeks, and they're, I don't know, 20 to 30 bucks, somewhere around there. And uh, that's not cost effective if you got to buy a new plate every two weeks. Um, or you could flip it over, so that'd be every month. But, so here's what I did. The first thing I did is I took the plate after two or three prints, took it over to my sink kitchen sink, put some Dawn dish, uh, dishwashing liquid on it with some hot water, scrub it down really good with a Scotch-Brite pad, uh, not steel wool or anything like that, just one of them scrubbing pads, and uh, scrubbed it off really good, rinsed it really good to make sure all the soap was off of it, and then dried it completely. <clears throat> I would do both sides. Then I'd take 99% isopropyl alcohol, spray it down, and wipe it with a lint-free cloth and um, get that nice and clean. Once that was done and the isopropyl alcohol evaporated and it was all cleared, I would take a uh, Elmer's glue stick and then put a thin layer of glue on the whole surface. With that, I can do two or three prints with no problems with adhesion. Uh, large prints, small prints, small groups of small parts, and I would I would make sure I would make sure to uh, do my glue stick all the way out to the outer edges of the uh, build plate, and then 
um, after two or three prints, flip it over, put some glue on it on the other side, two or three prints, take it off and wash it. Uh, I have now two plates, so I would prepare both plates. That way, when I wash this one, I can slip the other one on and then start printing while I have this one washed and then I prep it. So uh, that's been working really good. Adhesion has been really good. Uh, errors, I'd gotten a couple errors when I first started printing and um, it doesn't really explain what the problem is. Uh, I was having problems with the, uh, right when I go to print, I would get a problem with the uh, bed, uh, some error that looked like bed alignment. And what it was, let's see if I can get a better look at this. If I can get in here and come down. The bed has these little notches. There's a notch here and here. And on the other side, there's a notch here and here. Let's see if I can get a better light so you can see. So you can see here, there's a notch here, uh, there's a lip here and a lip here, and then there's another one on this side. That's so the bed can fit perfectly in there. Um, there will be times, and it's it's kind of difficult because it, the magnet's pretty strong. So if you're not lined up correctly, like say you're like that, this end of the bed, as the bed rises, will get caught, let's see if I can bring this up, on this, on this top lip. It'll get caught on here. Let's see if I can show you, right in here. And uh, uh, what happens is it, it won't allow it to do the bed leveling check. So you'll get an error. So just make sure every time you set your bed, your, your, your build plate, that you slide it into those notches and you get it right in there. You'll notice right up front, I can look in here. If you look straight down, you should see a little bit of the white from this front uh, edge of the of the bed, just forward of the of the build plate. So that's the main error. Um, then maintenance on the um, screws here. You, it says uh, I've seen some some uh, YouTube where they've added oil, but it actually says to add grease. There's a, uh, a little package of grease that comes with it, some silicone grease. And all you wanna do is bring the plate, the build plate just on both screws, screw here and here, bring it all the way down, take a little dab and just run it along this screw just to spread it out and then bring the plate up and down to cycle it through. The other thing is where these, not where the stepper motors are. So you got a motor, let me get this put up. You have a motor up here and a motor over here, both of them with the yellow sticker on them. But you have pulleys right there and right here. And then in the front, you all you got to do is look where the belts go. There's a small pulley on every one of them. Uh, in the back, there's there's a few pulleys back there too. Those will be uh, will start squeaking, and especially this one up front, uh, up in the front right. That that one there started squeaking a lot on me. All you need to do is take a little bit of. Um, penetrating oil or some synthetic oil. Uh, get yourself one that has like a, a long needle applicator. And you just go in and you just put like one or two drops on the top and bottom of those pulley wheels. You don't want to put any oil on the stepper motors. The motor itself has, uh, has bearings and stuff in it that's already taken care of. 
it's these it's these little pulley wheels right up in there that silver wheel right up here and there's a little one right there and then up front there's a couple and then there's a couple farther in the back this is on the actual gantry that has there's actually two on each side one in the back and one in the front and they'll drop oil to those two those two the one two up front and the two in the back then the only thing you have left after that are the rods you have the stainless rods here and here and then the four carbon fiber rods here and here the stainless rods uh you wipe down with a lint-free cloth with isopropyl alcohol, and then uh, you could put a little, I don't know if you put any oil on it, I don't think you need to, but you definitely do not oil the carbon fiber rods. That's these black rods that go across the gantry. All you do with those is wipe it down with isopropyl alcohol and uh, let it, let it dry, cycle it back in front, um, whoops, and then make sure you get the whole thing all, all the way across. There should be no oil on the carbon fiber rods. The stainless rods, uh, you can look at the wiki uh, for Bamboo Lab uh, online. There should be a... Um, there should be an ex uh, explanation of what to do with the stainless rods. I don't think you oil them, though. Um, I know you wipe them down with uh, isopropyl alcohol. That's what I've been doing to keep it clean. I do that about maybe every month. So I've done one since I've gotten this thing. And uh, other than all that, this thing runs pretty good. I love its quality. Uh, I'm hoping they come out with a larger printer. Uh, I plan on getting a... Um, x1 carbon that's my next printer and i built i don't know if you can see i i did print the um whoops i printed the uh, enclosure the bamboo lab enclosure i installed the fan up in there is the camera and i also put in the led light that's up there too uh, the only thing, the only thing I don't like is the camera is pretty poor. Um, it, it does a refresh of like once every five seconds or something like that. And half the time I don't even, I, I can't even connect to it, but, uh, it's, you know, it is what it is. I got a little piece of filament stuck in the bearing right there, but, um, I, uh, I'm really impressed with it. I do recommend getting the, um, what do they call it, the, the cable chain. I went ahead and ordered it. Uh, after I ordered it, I got an email saying, don't install it until I get a new um, a cable for the hot end because it's uh, it has some kind of, this cable that's on it right now, it getting flexed by the cable chain may damage it. So they're going to send me a new cable free. I just got to wait for it. Then I'll install that. And, uh, then I can install the cable chain. I also may get an AMS for this too. Um, I, I plan on going all out. I plan on getting the X1 carbon and then four AMSs so I can have 16 colors and then, uh, doing some cool color printing. But if you have any more questions, hit me up. If you have any uh, ideas or recommendations, I'm all for it too. I'm learning this thing. Um, I really enjoy it. I have a 500 millimeter Tronxy printer upstairs that I haven't even used because I use that to, to print large amounts of small parts. So I can do uh, like, for instance, on some uh, ham radio stuff that we're, me and a buddy of mine do. I can print six of the of these boxes on one bed, and that's the boxes, six boxes and six tops. 
And so that's a total of 12. On this, I can do two, two tops and two bottoms. But I can print two, th uh, three rounds of two, giving me six, in half of the time it takes to print all six on that 500 millimeter printer. So I'm getting rid of that printer too and uh, getting getting the X1 Carbon. I'm gonna set me up a little print farm upstairs. I'm not gonna have 20 printers like a lot of people do because I don't do a, a lot for business. Although this makes it really interesting to start doing some business. Uh, I have customers from IT stuff that I do. I have a little IT company and my buddy, we do the uh, ham radio stuff. So uh, that's that's my plan. So if you have any questions, so I, like I said, I'll take any ideas and recommendations to try. The cleaning process works for me. Uh, and I'm pretty sure it's going to work for anybody. Once you get a clean print surface, you can just go right into printing. And uh, like I said, I do three prints before I run and cycle the cleaning again. So hit me up, drop a comment, subscribe. I'll talk to you all later.